Hey there! Last time we made a toggle for an animated door that opens and closes and is also globally synced. This time we are gonna focus on canvases and UI. So what canvases and UI are is basically um, we currently have a button which is a which is an object. It's, it's just a cube that we can click to interact with our Udon programs. But let's say we don't want that and we actually want to create like a panel with a flat button that is basically just like an image that we can click. So what we want to do for that is press right click, press UI and create a canvas. Now there's a couple of settings we need to do to actually make this work. So, what we want to do is change the render mode to world space, change the layer from UI to default, and press add component and add a UI shape. This basically just makes the canvas work in VRChat, otherwise it wouldn't work. So, as you can see, you can see nothing. It's somewhere up there. So what we want to do is change width and height to just one and change location to 0, 0, 0. If we now double click it, we can see it is uh, right here, just in the ground. So what we want to do is move it wherever we want it. I want it to the left of the door and we're just going to take it, move it where we want it. Now click on rotate. If you hold control, you can go in fiber steps, so you can easily go to 90 degrees. Then we can take this, put this a bit higher. As you can see, it's currently like grayed out. That is because if you look from the side, it's in the, it's in the cube, basically in the wall. So we pull it out a tiny bit. Now it's white. Now it's visible. Otherwise it would just be in the wall and nobody could see it. So this alone doesn't do much. This is basically only the plane that we can put the buttons and whatever on. So we are going to start with a simple button. So for example, we're going to go here. I recommend you using the TextMesh Pro ones, as I can show you. If we have a normal button and then go to scale and scale this down all the way, not so it inverts, but down, you can see the text is kind of blurry and not so nice looking. So if we delete this, we can go here, press UI, go to Button Text Mesh Pro. It will ask you to import something, so just press import on that one, and it's going to give us the option to import uh, TPM examples and extras too. So we're just going to do that too. So now it loads. There we go. It has, it is done importing. And if we now scale this down to an appropriate size, so something that is inside the bounds of this, of this white cube, so like this basically, you can already see the, the, the text is nice and crisp and it's easy to read. So what we can do now is go onto the button, open it up and go to the text TP, a TMP object. And in here we have the text option so we can click on this and rename it to whatever we want. In my case, this is going to be door open slash close. As you can see, the text ain't fitting completely. So just go to font size and on text mesh pro, you can actually click to the left of it. As you can see, you have like two little arrows. And if you now hold down, you can drag to the left to scale it properly to the button. If we now click on the button, I want to put this a tiny bit higher. So I'm just going to put it all the way to the top, just so it's nice and it's clean here. But this wouldn't do much yet. What we want to do is, first of all, create a long behavior on this, as we will definitely need one. For this tutorial, I'm just going to make a, a local toggle. If you want to know how to make a global one, it's basically the same principle, but uh, 
if you want to make it global, I would recommend you going back to one of the older videos. I have a video on how to make global toggles and you can just use that and replace the step that I'm going to show you now. So what we want to do is make sure it's on Udon Graph Program Asset, press new program. We have a program now. Um, we can't use interact now because we basically don't have a physical button. We can't press space and search for interact. This wouldn't do anything. This wouldn't work. So what we need to do is go to the actual button tab in your inspector and there's a on click list empty. So we want to press on the plus and now we see nothing still. We want to take our Udon behavior, just hover over the name and drag it in there. Now you still see nothing. So press on no function and then on Udon behavior and you see this entire list. You basically want to go down as far as you can to send custom event string. Now we have an empty field and we just can call this door for example. I'm just going to call it door as that's probably the easiest to remember. Now in our Udon graph we can just do a custom event and if we now go in here and call a door this will interact with this. So if we now do, uh, if we now take our door and drag it in here, and then drag out from it, it is set active. I'm gonna I'm gonna do this a bit faster because I already explained this in the other tutorials. So if you want to know how to make a simple toggle, just go back to the uh, older videos. So basically, all we're doing is replace the uh, event interact that we have on our normal buttons to a custom event, with the same custom event that is in here. So we're just gonna go get active self, and then we're gonna get a binary negation. Drag that in there. This is just a local toggle. Like I said, if you want to know how to make a global one, go watch the older video. So we now go into play mode and have sign emu, which I'm gonna link in the description, imported in our project. We can test it in Unity. So as we can see now, we don't have a physical button anymore. We have this, and if we click it, it turns the door on and off. This is basically all we want, but for example, we can do more stuff with canvases now. So what I'm also going to show you is how to make a slider. We're just going to make a slider to slide the door open and close. So what we're going to do is press on canvas, right click this, go to UI, get a, where is it? Uh, I'm going to find it. Slider. There. You can just scale the slider down and down just so it uh, fits in here. This might not be the perfect example, but if we now wanted to sync to the door so we can slide the door open and close with uh, the slider, we can go and go to our door. We uh, need to create a door open and a door close animation, which if you don't know how to do that, I uh, will link a video because I have shown that in the last video, so I'd recommend you to watch that first. So what we're going to do then is we need to change what we have in here. What we want to do is delete that basically, press right click, create state from new blend tree. If we go in this, like double click it, then you go in this, we have a blend tree. So this does nothing on its own basically. So we want to add two blend trees. So we get like, uh, press on add motion field, but we need two. So we're going to add two motion fields. So we want to put the door close animation in the top one and the door open animation in the bottom one. And we want to create a parameter. This time we're going to create a float and we're just going to call it uh, what can we call it? Door blend. Make sure you copy this. And on here, where it says parameter, make sure to change it to door blend. We are also going to go and go to our slider, make a udon behavior, 
and we're going to press the program make sure it's on udon graph program asset and we're going to open that we're going to add an animator it's here we're going to call this Anapor. and we're going to make this public compile reload so it's shown here take your door drag it in so if we now put our animator in here and drag out from it and uh, get a set float in this case and change it to string float, the very bottom option. And we can put in the door blend, the name that we have in our animator for our parameter. And then we can also add a slider in here. We're just gonna add a slider. We're also gonna rename this to slider. We're gonna make this public too. Compile, reload, so it's shown here. You can now drag in your slider to here. And then we can drag out from here. So, what we wanna do now is basically get the value of the slider, like how far it's dragged to the left or right, and set the flow to that. Which, we can't drag this in here directly. So what we wanna do is drag out from this and get a get, uh, get value not get min value or max value, we just want to get a get value. Now from this float, we can drag into the value. This on its own wouldn't do much because we don't have a flow connected yet that's actually triggering it. So on your slider, you have an on value changed. List is empty. So we're going to press on plus and we're going to drag in our udon behavior again. Go to udon behavior, go all the way down to send custom event where is it there and we're going to call this a uh, door again oh by the way i forgot we need to put in uh in the name we need to put in door blend like i said as it's an our animator parameter then when we have set this to door we can make a custom custom event and we're going to call this door this needs to be called exactly the same as this so we're gonna drag our flow in here and compile reload and if we now press on the play button we can if it loads we can then go in here and we see our slider and now we can drag it to the left to open the door and to the right. This might not be the best example because I don't know when you would do this to a door, but this basically works with every object. And we can still door open and close completely with this button. This is only a small introduction to canvases, so we are going to use these in the new next tutorials too, so this tutorial is basically needed for the next tutorials. Another thing you, by the way, want to change, because I forgot about that, is if you click on your slider to navigation, you want to set navigation to none. Otherwise, if you move in VR, it's actually going to move the slider, and we don't want that. And also do the same for the button. Go to button, search for this, go to navigation, change it to none. This is basically everything for our canvases by now. Like I said, this is a basic introduction to it. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope this will help.